Matthew chapter 19, verse 23. Now we cut off from the rich young rulers. We wanted to stay at a point there, but we're continuing. Now, I don't know if the rich young ruler is still standing there. Or did he leave? He said, but when the young man heard the saying, he went away sorrowful, and he had great possession. Then Jesus said, well, how far did the guy get away before he heard? Can he hear what Jesus is going to say? I mean, have you ever been talking to somebody, and you got somebody else there? And I mean, I've been in the street ministry. They start walking away. I'll tell the people where this person's wrong, if he, where he's wrong. Somebody comes up to me, they're a Catholic, and you know, you know I, all right, as you walk off, I'm going to start telling the people where, where the Catholic is wrong. You're not going to come up to me and then blast me, then they're walking on, a lot of them will walk off, but hey, I got my five cents, well, I'll give you 20. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now what Jesus is saying, not all rich men are going to are going to hell, but a rich man will have a hard time going to heaven. Kingdom of heaven. There's that, that the birds are flying, the trees are growing, the water is flowing. Bob Ross is happy wherever he is. Bob Ross would add more trees. <laughs> Happy trees. Okay? That's the kingdom of heaven. You can paint the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier, oh, here we go, for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. And, I, and, and everybody, well, there's a gate in Jerusalem that is called the needle, and the camels go through it. That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus says, but you're not to take little. I think this is what you call a play on word. Here is a real live camel. I've seen about four in my lifetime. A live camel. He's got hump. I don't know if I've, I don't know how many humps of camels I've seen, but they got one hump, two humps. To go through an eye of a needle. Now, the eye of a needle is, is your mom. Maybe not today, but your mom would have a sewing kit, and in that sewing kit, there's a needle that has a hole on it, and if you want something hard to do, you try to take that thread and put that thread through the eye of that needle. You can't even get thread through there without having an attitude. I, I, you know, when I was a man growing up before I was married, I've had times where I had to sew a button, something like that, and I've taken that thread and put it, and said, like, I'll do it later. And I have people say, you know, if you do it, if you lick it, if you do this to it, you burn the end. Still, sometimes, that's hard. And what Jesus is saying, literally, but, but as a play on words, you can get a camel through that, the eye of that needle, or you can't get a thread for a rich man to go to heaven. Now, also, what we're reading here is not church age doctrine. Because we're going to look at the millennium, so before the millennium is the tribulation period, and if you're rich in the tribulation period, you have the mark. Get the point? Which concludes to us that there may be a way in the tribulation. I believe for Jews. I believe the only salvation for the Gentiles is if you help the Jew in every way and every me to help that Jew, and you don't even know what you're doing, but to the Jew, if he receives the mark, there may be a way that he can repent and get right with God. But if your entire life in the tribulation period rests upon that mark, go ahead. Break every bone in your leg and head to the emergency room. And then look for that mark and there's no mark. You ain't getting no service. Get in a massive automobile accident on the highway. You got four cars involved. It's a massive pop. You are in rebel. You are in a wreck. You are sitting at that seat. is no more where that seat is in that car. You are jammed. Fire department shows up. They look in your car. They look at your right hand. They look at your forehead. No mark. All right, leave them. 
Just move his car off the side of the road. You got a baby? You've had a baby since since the, the rapture's happened? You're living the tribulation. Listen, all the babies go at the rapture, but after the tribulation period, Jesus said, well, it's in the kids sucking. You got a baby in tribulation. That baby's sick. That baby's got colic. That baby has got a massive uh, diaper rash. I mean, there's many, many ways I take we taking our children to the doctor to the hospital. Ailments. You go walk in that doctor's office. She ain't going to ask for an insurance card. She's going to, where's the mark? No mark? You and that baby get out of here. You run off to the emergency room. <laughs> you can't even get emergency room treatment with an insurance card. Never mind not having a mark of tribulation. And there may be a way that you could repent as a Jew and get right with God and have that mark erased like leprosy. Somehow God gives two great chapters about leprosy. That leprosy re represents sin. But we're not going to get into that. Or even still, a, a rich man today, if he's got riches, he's got fame, it'd be hard for him to, to go up and, you know, these, you have these, what they call true to life stories and all that, which, you know, they find out later they're not. Reality TV. And, you know, we're, we're going to go on this island, we're going to live on this island, we're just the needs of the island, we're no... You never see a rich man do that. You're never going to see politicians give it all for the people of their own pocket. They want to keep their riches and they want more riches. And the average thing for the rich man is to get more. The average thing for anybody investing in the stock market, they want the numbers to go up. And you're going to tell a rich man about Jesus Christ. And how, he, and listen, after, save, after salvation, to, to be right with Jesus is to serve the Lord. And, you know, you give up your riches like you just told this man. Give up and give alms. Alms is giving money to the poor without recording on your 1040. Without everybody in your lodge or your, your company know that, hey, look at us, we're giving money. One big grocery store here, oh, we give money to the children. I don't believe you. And the money that you intake, I don't know if you do that. But they make a big show of it. Jesus says, that's a hypocrite. And the thing is, it is very hard for a rich man to be saved. But, but remember this, J.C. Penney, the owner of the J.C. Penney store. <coughs> Not today. The original founder of J.C. Penney was saved would give his employees days off on the Sabbath, with you know, the, the Christian Sabbath Sunday, and the midweek service. I don't see Chick-fil-A giving them midweek service off. His employees enjoyed his company. There has been past men who have owned companies and mo owned situations, and they, he gave to the Lord. He prayed to the Lord over over his employee. He, that they would help their employee. A, a woman would, would would truly get pregnant, and everybody would be excited. And she would find that he would buy her a crib or whatever she needed. Come on, I wonder how many of your politicians out there, and I do have one in mind, would give to their employee without anybody knowing. And how many rich would truly believe on the Lord Jesus Christ according to the Bible and not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ so I can make this people happy or make this people happy or make grandma ha happy or... Listen, I went to church to shut my grandmother up. I told her, listen, listen, Grandma, all right, if I go to church with you just one time, I don't want to hear it no more. I got saved not because of that. I got saved because the Holy Spirit convicted my heart. Now, he didn't say, and I've heard people say, oh, rich man can't go to heaven. He didn't say that. He said it's a difficulty. Money. 
Paul writes to Timothy, he says that the love of money is the root of, he's writing to Timothy to preach to Christian, not the unsaved. He said, listen, now you're saved and you may have money, you may be, that may hinder you from serving the Lord because that money seems to be, it's not a God, it's not a poison, but man, it's very close to There are people who continually lose their lives. I don't mean death. I mean lose their lives and their fortune because they're one armed bandit at the casino. If you've seen pictures, I come from I come from Connecticut, and there's two major Indian casinos there. And I, listen, I've had I've heard stories. And you sit there, you look at a picture. There, 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 there's a grandma. That's so what she's doing. She's sitting in chips. She will pee herself. So she can stay at that slot machine. But going there and telling them about Jesus, even if you will be allowed to go in there with Jesus. Remember I say unto you, the rich man shall hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. That, I mean, that, take that thread. It's a real needle. It's a real camel. It's a figurative story to show you how hard it is. You know, they will put hurricane strength winds like into miles per hour. And sometimes they'll say, you know, it, it was just as fast as cars going down the highway. <laughs> well, the hurricane's not cars going down the highway, <clears throat> but you use it as an illustration. Oh, they'll say, and which I never had, thank God. But they'll say a tornado sounds like a train. It's like, it sounds like freight cars are coming. Now, come on. Is that tornado freight cars? Can you actually say, oh, Mrs. Smith heard a tornado, and, and here's a picture of a this train that went through it, but it's not. And it's not. It is not a needle. It's not a, a, a gate in Jerusalem where the camels had to kneel down to go through I don't know things of this bogus garbage. Now, when the disciples heard it, they were extremely amazed, saying, now remember, we are coming out of the Old Testament. A man that was rich typically showed that God was blessing me and God was pleasing. That theory, oh, I'm rich, I'm great, and God loves me, is Old Testament. Paul was rich, like this man here, and he gave it all up. At one point in time, he says, listen, I, mean, I was naked. I fasted. I was without food. Paul wore most of his life the, the rags of the, the government of prison. Paul was rich when he got saved and he gave it all up. There was a man in the Philemon. The Philemon, oh, yeah, for Philemon. Oh, messes this with the slave. He owned slaves. Now, he had to be rich, and Paul said, Man, you're a great Christian. I love you. You helped me, and I helped. I got this one of your slaves here. He's saving. Now today they were like, oh, that mean, nasty guy. That guy couldn't be saved. Then you go you go to your, your church. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Give us a Democrat. Give us a Democrat. My have see the glory of the coming of the Democrats. The North coming and shooting the South. How great can we get it better than that? And it, coming out of the Old Testament teachings is, well, wait a minute. Now Jesus is saying the rich can't get saved? Well, listen, the high priest and, and his assistant were rich. The Bible says they live in a castle. Um, oh, Joseph of Armenia had his own tombstone that he had dug out. Nicodemus, man, he brings a fortune. 
of spices for the burial of da for uh, Jesus' body. David was, was ruler. Solomon were ruler. And look at all the gold and the silver and the brass and the iron. And if you go back and look, a lot of those people who were right with God were rich. Because God blessed them. The book of Psalms. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I read my book of Psalms. And... Wait a minute. How come I'm not rich? Because that's not really for you. The book of Psalms is really not for Christians. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is not your shepherd, he's your husband. You got to get it right. So they're amazed because now the entire world is turned around. They're going to see in the book of Acts, they're going to see something. They're going to see beggars and people with low estate getting saved. But you're going to get um, Cornelius. He's rich. He gets saved. You got an Ethiopian eunuch of the queen in the queen's chariot with the queen's forces, not his. And he has a book of Isaiah and he reads and he gets Philip and he gets saved. Lydia, a sail of purple. She's got a kind of fortune because purple was expensive. Because whatever you needed to make purple was, was very high, hard to get. She had income. Do you think John the Apostle was rich to his entire thing? He ended up on the island of Platinus all by himself, scarred. So you cannot say, okay, they're rich, they can't get saved. So they ask, then who can be saved? Well, in the book of Acts today, we read, believe on the Lord. Because that's the same thing the Philippian jailer said. What must I do to be saved? There it is. And it's told to him by Paul and Silas, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Period. Simple. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession made unto sin, salvation. Simple. That's it. And the Philippian jailer was not at a church altar. And he wasn't wearing his Sunday best. Neither was Paul and Silas. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, Believe on me, and I shall be saved. No, 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 no. <laughs> And said unto him, with men, this is impossible. Religion. Look at your religions, and they are begun by a man. All of them. I don't know the names. I don't care to know the names. But the Mormons, Jehovah Witness, the Catholic Church, even the Baptist Church. And listen, the Baptist now is mad at me because the Baptist Church started with Jesus and John the Baptist. No. Because the Baptist church is not 100% holy and there's stuff wrong with the Baptist church and the Baptist church has been sinning, has been Christ away and Catholic-like since it started integrating with and marriage to the world. Okay? If you say, I saved you, you're not saved. Well, you know, it was that church down there. I got saved. Uh, warning. Was it the church that saved you? Was it the pastor that saved you? Or was it Jesus that saved you? Because look, but with God, all things are possible. Paul says, Silas planted, I watered. God gave the increase. And so you get churches and the preacher will get it. Well, you know, we got 14 people saved. No, you did not. And if you save them, they're going to hell. The book of Proverbs will say in a few places, you know, the way of man is death. 
The Bible is totally against a man getting saved by a man and not the man Christ Jesus. So your money, your religion. Now see, now he's pointing back to the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes and also, listen, they may be rich, they may be religious, they may do everything right, but they may not be right with God. I mean, would they crucify anybody? Never mind Jesus. They were so right in the scriptures and all that religion, they didn't even know who Jesus was. You know that, that, that night when they judged Jesus, they should take him in the room and say, listen Jesus, and get the scrolls out. Say, Jesus... The scroll is heavy. There you are. There you are. There you are. Would you like to just point out everything in Joseph's life? Because I guarantee we missed some. The book of Isaiah, Isaiah, you got time, Jesus? I know you got a point. You got time for us in the book of Isaiah to show you where you are? Shall we just go to Isaiah 53? Now listen, Jesus. Come on. Jesus, seriously. 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 You gotta die on that cross. We're gonna tell Pilate to kill you, and we're gonna get, we're gonna get a red heifer, and we're gonna denounce our sin and confess our sins before God, and we're gonna bring an offering. You better believe on that third day, wherever they bury you, because they didn't know where they were gonna bury you. Said you know a, a, a borrowed tomb. We'll find out where they buried you, and all of us will be there three days and three nights later. According to Jonah. Scriptures proclaim Jesus. And everything about him. Where was everybody at, at the tomb when Jesus came out? So. Don't say. That a rich man can't get saved. That, that's, a, that's not what Jesus said. He said it's hard for them to get saved. And if they are saved, Peter, I mean, Paul wrote to Timothy, it's going to be hard for them to do right with the Lord. <laughs> the eye of a needle is not a gate or an entrance into the city of Jerusalem where they have to, you know, kneel down. And they kneel down in the honor. Uh, just take that garbage. Take those those philosophers. Take those morons with, with the diploma and just throw them in a the garbage can. That for the rich man to enter the kingdom. Notice it says kingdom of God. It's not the kingdom of heaven. There's a man going to heaven. That's something that Bob Ross cannot paint. John the Apostle wrote the picture of the kingdom of God in the book of Revelation. The seraphims, the 24 elders, and the, the throne, and the glory, and the green rainbow. And all the multitudes and multitudes of angels. And we're not looking to the kingdom of heaven now. We're looking at God's kingdom. And it's hard for them to go into God's kingdom. Hard for them. Difficult. Not you can. But it's difficult. Money blinds the lost. Money blinds the saved. Written to the lost people who are unsaved. Written to the, the rich who are saved. I forget which where it says the love of money. Not money is the root of evil. The love of money. Look it up. Is the root of, of, of evil. That whole chapter is about a rich. Hebrews, no, James. James' epistle to the 12 tribes, not the church. Constantly in his book, he condemns the rich. That book is about the tribulation period. There is almost, for the rich man, there's almost a decree of death and hell. In the tribulation period, the only way you could be rich is you receive that mark. You have to be rich or poor. Rich by the mark, poor by no mark. 
Because with the mark, you can do everything you can do with your business. Without the mark, you know, receive not the mark shall not uh, cannot do any business. I, I don't know how to quote that verse. You can't do no business. You can't do nothing. You can't buy or sell without that mark. One way you can buy or sell is get rich is buying and selling. So there'll be coming a time if there if there's the stock exchange. Well, I don't know what they call it in Japan and China. And there's that stock exchange. It's not going to begin with the bell. It's going to be. You're at the door, you're entering, okay, scan your mark, scan your mark. You need to get out of here. Of course, I'm the, I'm the owner of this big company. You got the mark? No, get out of here. Now, what do you think that man's going to say when he's been rejected by his financial world? You think he's going to run quickly down to Skid Row, or you think he's going to run completely down to the Baptist Church? After the Baptist Church has been raptured, run into the Baptist Church, the Antichrist has set up, receive your mark at the First Baptist Church, we're in your town. Ha ha! Your beautiful ground, your beautiful things, your beautiful altar, your beautiful. We got the greatest church, and the Antichrist will use it for the marking grounds. Oh, I just got a bunch of people mad at me that time. What do you think? The church is going to be raptured? Ha! You're dressing your church up for the Antichrist. All are welcome. You don't have the mark. Come on down to the open door, Baptist Church. All are welcome. This line for heads, this line for right hands. Refreshments and chicken and pot and potato salad will be served after the market. You say that's difficult. Listen, when I worked at EB General Dynamics Submarine Building, we had a time the the Red Cross would come and we would be paid to go give blood. <laughs> That's my motive. I go up to my union circle, my boss. Hey, you know they're having that the they're having that whatever building it was. Forget. But hey, they're giving blood. Uh, can you sign my time card? Yeah. Okay. Here's your code. I had to get a code. Sally. Yeah. All right. You you've been cleared by the Red Cross to go up and give blood now. I said okay. I get up there. They sit down at the table. They do whatever they have to do. And I'm done. They said, Mr. Hayward. Yes. How do you feel? Whew. All right, over there in the next room at the table, there's, there's free orange juice, and we got donuts. <laughs> I just, just got paid an extra hour and a half, two hours to sit there and eat orange juice and eat uh, uh, donuts. Mr. Hayward, how do you feel? Oh, I still feel queasy. All right, here's some more orange juice and get, you know, get another donut. All right, what time is the ship over? Cool, I got a couple more hours. And you know what set me free from the rest of the people at the General Dynamics? They didn't give blood. And we got refreshments afterwards. In a company building. With company heat. Keep company air conditioning. Thank God I'm safe. Okay, so. Then Peter answered. Hey, here we go. Here's Peter. And said unto him, Jesus, behold, we have forsaken all. I don't think he's a liar. They forsake their boats. John and James said, Dad, here's a fish. We'll see you. And you never see them going back to their father, Zebedee. Matthew gets up from the table, never goes back. Peter went back fishing later. <laughs> Leave it to Peter. What shall we have there for? Now, that's a great question. Wait a minute. We're not rich, Jesus. True. You're not. You're fishermen. One's a tax collector. But you know what? Okay, come to think about it. We have left everything to follow. What is it to us? And you can apply this to the Christian. Because the Bible says we will get crowns, silver, gold, precious stone. If there's anything remaining at the judgment seat of Christ, we will be rewarded. If it's wood, hay, or stubble, ash, there is no reward. Everything done for Christ shall get a, a reward. Everything done for self or the devil is burnt. Your cat food money will burn up for little kitty. Your little money you gave for the mission for service of God 
will abide by the fire and earn gold, silver, precious crowns. You're going to the football game. Wood, hay, and stubble burns up. That didn't do you nothing. Did you witness it anybody while you were there? While you watch them drink beer and act like idiots? Did you witness it anybody? No? Wood, hay, or stubble lost. All right, you went to the ball game, you passed out gospel track, you told people about Jesus in between whatever. Okay, that goes goes silver precious stones. So Peter says, Hey, Jesus, wait a minute. Oh, stop right here. We've been following you X amount of years. What's gonna happen to us? Because we're poor. Now, can you imagine Matthew now stepping up to the plate? He, he had to be rich, educated. He's writing, doing books and figures in addition. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, talking to the disciples, you're hardly going to see a Christian today do what we're going to read. I've had family leave me. I've had friends leave me. I've had co-workers leave me. I've had Christians leave me. And I've had churches burnt, burnt, uh, butt me out of their church for the word of God. I have been teased and harassed and ridiculed for my beliefs on Easter and Christmas and certain things that the Christian does and the churches do. I don't care. That's my convictions. That's my teaching. You're wrong. I'm right. When we get to the judgment seat of Christ, you realize when you're wrong, I try to warn you. At the judgment seat of Christ, it's too late to, oh, well, let me go back. No, you can't. Even worse, if you pretend to be saved and you end up in the great white fight, great, great white throne judgment. In the regeneration, that's the millennium. When all the earth is removed of the curse and it, it gets right and everything is right. There's no more curse. All the animals get right except the serpent. He's still eating dust. Poor guy. But he caused all the problem. He gave himself to the devil. Don't give yourself to the devil. So that regeneration is the millennium. That is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ seated, he's going to talk about in a minute, on the throne of David. Ruling, I'm going to see that in a minute. In the generation when the Son of Man, Jesus, shall sit in the throne of his glory. And that's on this earth. That's a thousand years. Before he sits on the throne in New Jerusalem. Ye also shall sit on twelve thrones. That's the disciples. One of them twelve is going to go to hell. So you're going to pick up that other disciple. I think it's Acts 1 or Acts 2. Matthias, I think it was. Paul's not the 12th disciple. Paul's the 14th. Because Matthias is the 13th. Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. All right, run to James. Written to the 12 tribes of Israel. Scattered. That's the tribulation period. After the tribulation period, they're all gathered together, and Ezekiel says they got their land by the tribe. Now, I don't know if in each land you're going to have a disciple. I don't know how that's going to be, but in each of them, each of the places, 12 of the disciples, the apostles, are going to have thrones and rulership under Jesus in the millennium. Because they gave their entire life to Jesus. They got up, forsook all, and went and followed. Now Christians that do the same thing today, they, they, they get up, they forsake all, people hate them, churches hate them. The Bible says, 
And he's going to take your talents that you've given to Jesus. And you're going to get a city. So in the millennium, the complete authority is not the President of the United States. It's not a Republican, I'm sorry. We're not going to be under the banner of the red, white, blue. In fact, the flag of Israel is wrong today. The only flag of Israel, there are 12 banners over each of the children of the tribe of Israel. All right, so the extreme, extreme, almighty ruler of Israel in the millennium is Jesus Christ. His parliament, his cabinet, whatever you want to call it, is the 12 disciples. Under the 12 disciples, there are rulers of cities, the bride of Jesus Christ. Not all Christians are going to get that. Because you may be saved, but not all Christians give it all. Some Christians go to Mickey Ratland, they go to the ball game, they go and do this. They got the, the Wednesday night, skip the church service. Children ballerina and the, you know you know the youth ball baseball game and and they go to these things and they don't tell anybody they don't leave no gospel track. I'm sorry, buddy, you lose out. I mean, have you ever gotten in trouble at your grocery store because you have put gospel tracks in empty bags? For people to put their groceries in when they get taking things out when they get, oh, what's this little sample here? Did you buy this? No. Must be free. I wonder what it says. We have had the head cashier of the store, when we come walking up to the front, she eyes us. We have put in that. Grocery, we have putting that, that gospel track in the grocery bag, and I get a tap on the shoulder. Hey, she reaches his hand in there, grabs it, and I think you forgot something. That's a reward. Well, you know, I tip the, the waitress a good tip at the, at the restaurant. Did you give her a gospel track? I've got a mean, nasty thing I do sometimes. And I wonder how much money has been thrown in the garbage. I will take money. I will fold it up so quick. I will put it inside of a gospel track. She throws that gospel track out. She lost her trip. And can you imagine going, that guy didn't give me no tip or anything to that family. Yes, I did. You threw it out. Because I put Jesus in front of the tip. Oh, you're judging me. You judge me as not giving you nothing. Judge not least you be judged or you lose your money. All right, so there's the disciples. They will they will get 12. Can you imagine Peter on the throne at finally? He's never been on the throne. The Pope has been on the throne, but not Peter. Peter's going to get his day on the throne. Now, Peter is going to be busy at the Great White Throne Judgment. Because one of the things Peter is going to have to do is he's going to have to judge. I don't know how many there are or how many there will be. He's going to have to judge every single pope since the first one. Say, oh, I'm one of you guys. Shall we talk about doctrine issues? Shall we talk about what the Bible says? Can you give me a Bible book, chapter and verse that I was a pope? I ever sat on the throne. The only time he's going to sit on the throne is a thousand years in the millennium. Judging the 12 tribes of Israel, not Gentiles, not nations, as the Catholic Church does. You are not going to bring a Gentile in the millennium before the disciples. That's not their job. And they will judge by the law. By the law. The men that Moses finally set up got advice from his father-in-law, Jethro. And there's a list of men who you are to find. They're to be righteous. They're to be holy. Non-liars. Is the, is, the, is the decree of the deacons found in the book of Acts. 
Friend, I have, I have not found one of them deacons of the Baptist churches I've been in. I've been in a lot of I have not found one decree followed by their church deacon. Because they're, they're, they're friends with the pastor. And they're garbage. Oh, you hate the Baptist church. And everyone, everyone, everyone. Now Jesus is talking to who? Everyone. That's church doctrine. That's the gospel doctrine. That's the book of Acts doctrine. Everyone that has forsaken houses. You know what's bad in America, the American Christianity today? How many Christians in America have looked at their house and say, all right, goodbye, I'm going to serve the Lord? All right, the missionaries do. Do you know a pastor is not living in a house? Does he own a house? Well, he hasn't forsaken his house. He's supposed to live in a house that the church owns. Matter of fact, in the church age, according to the book of Acts, they went from house to house. The churches were in the house. Go read Philemon. It's the, one of the smallest books in the Bible. You have got to tell your wife, honey, I love you very much for saying, uh-oh. Every Sunday morning, this house has to be clean. It has to be, what, what are you talking about? Because we're going to have church services here. We're going to have people come over from the neighborhood, and we're going to tell them about Jesus. We're going to break bread. And that wife has got to be willingly to give herself and her house and her time to serve the Lord for people to come over. I've been in I've been in churches, Baptist churches. You don't even know where the pastor lives. I've sat in the pastor house. He's got the Christmas tree. He's got the bale bush, and you sit there at the table playing liars poker. What? Excuse me. I guarantee there there are pastors' houses where they serve alcohol beverages and maybe even smoke cigarettes. That's not forsaking your houses. That's not forsaking your ways. Or brethren. Have you given up odds with your brother? For Jesus. I have. My brother. My brother had an email. I forget what it was. But it was Judas 2. I said, Frank. If you don't change that. You and I are done. Because I am not associating myself with the devil. No, I'm not the devil. You call yourself the devil. I forsook my brother. He ended up on a hospital car in the hospital emergency room and he died of extreme heart attack. I'm his age right now. Or sisters. My half sister thinks I'm a fruitcake, thinks I'm a Catholic basher because she's a Catholic and never goes to church. She really doesn't want to have anything to do with me. And the only, only way to butt into the family. Father, my dad was lost. My dad my dad was the first person I witnessed to the day after I got saved, uh, April uh, 26th, after being saved April 25th, Saturday. Uh, he was after church. He was the first one. I ran over to his house and I told him about Jesus. I told him always about Jesus. Gave him gospel track. I, I told him, invite him to church. He died alone in a nursing home. And as I've been told, I mean, just very sickly. His skin was yellow. But before I left for Florida, you know, we went and saw him saying, you know, Dad, you need to be saved. Dad, we're going to Florida. Mother. My mother saved, thank God. We talked to each other. She's got ailments, she's got health, she's got issues, so do I. When I got troubles, I call mom. But, you know, I haven't completely obscene myself away from my mom. Because my mom celebrates Christmas and, and, you know, Santa Claus. and Some of the stuff that you're like, it's like, uh, so even I haven't forsaken all. I have not dared to tell my mother the complete truth about being a Christian. 
Evidently, her church doesn't either. A wife. Lisa was saved. She was a wonderful Christian woman. She did right. I married my second wife, Tracy. You know what? To stay married, make peace in the house. It caused a lot of trouble in our house. And I found out years after she died. The trouble she caused in the house. You know, if, if those troubles were known, if those troubles were dealt with, it would have been better for me, like Paul said, you know what, this, you need to get out of the house. Divorce me? No, this is separation. You need to get out of my house. Or children. You told your lovely, great beauties and all that. Ooh. My son went against the Lord in all practices. How'd you separate? I called the police and had him arrested. Family were mad at me, and they didn't even know the whole story. My daughter ever comes home, you know, married to an unsaved man, got a baby, and I, goodbye. You, you've been brought up from the Bible since you were a child. That's your problem, not mine. Well, aren't you supposed to be? You're not going to live a life of sin and bring it home to my house. It's that simple. Well, you know, Jesus forgave that that, uh, that woman committed adultery. Okay, I'll forgive my daughter if she asked for it, but Jesus didn't take her into his house. He said, you go and sin no more. Bye. See, you didn't get that lesson. You know, we're supposed to forgive everybody, but Jesus didn't bring them home. Matter of fact, Jesus had no home. Jesus slept out on the ground, maybe like J Jacob. He used a pillow, I mean, a, a, a stone as a pillow. There's one point in the Bible, it says they all went home or went to their place like that, and Jesus went into the mountain. Where are you going to the mountain for? As was his living place. As, as the Spirit got, maybe he called a couple of rabbits. Come here, I need a pillow tonight. I don't know. Or maybe he suffered because he was a sufferer as a servant and he slept his head on a rock. And there are people, Christians today, they sleep in the most fluffiest, greatest bound bed, protected by the ailments. And they don't do anything for God, they don't do anything for Jesus, and they show up Sunday morning. Oh, how great I am. In a suit. Jesus didn't have a suit. You giving up lands? I had a rich aunt in Mississippi. I told my whole entire family about Jesus, one way or another. The Catholics got mad at me. She got mad at me. She used, she used to send me a birthday card. She sent me a card with a lottery ticket in it. And I prayed to that God of hers. Every time I opened up before, I was like, oh, man, two bucks. I go down to the store, cash it, buy two more tickets to lose. She had, she was rich. She had, she had servants in Mississippi. I don't know where all that stuff. She's dead now. All right, so I give it all up. I give it to the world. For my name's sake. Now you give it all up because you're a jerk. You lose it all to the to the tax collector, to the people, the bill market. You lose it all because you're a jerk. I said that already. If you did not lose it for the name of Jesus, then you're not going to get a reward for it. Well, you know... The story of, and they went right on my head as soon as I said, Mother Teresa. Oh, she's going to be a heavenly woman. No, she didn't believe in God at all. Matter of fact, they told you in her private life, you read her book, she was, she was an angry woman. If whatever she did, and she did a lot, if she didn't do it for the name of Jesus, or whatever she didn't do for the name of Jesus. It's forgotten. 
It's not credited to her. You need to read the stories of all the, 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 the men of the, of the mission fields of the 1800s. You need to read about the, 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 the Baptist, the Christian, and orphanages and evangelists in early parts of America. And even the William Booth and Catherine Booth, and not the, not the Salvation Church today, but the church they started. They were kicked out of their church, and they went to go start a church with the bums, the prostitutes, and all. all. That their great church didn't want them in. Bring them out, bring them out. They smell and they stinking, they do some drinking. Man, they're not here. Oh, you know, you, you, you can't do that kind of service. You, we're church, we're not going to allow you to do stuff like that, Mr. Mr. Booth. And Mrs. Boops got up there, I don't remember exactly the words, but, but, you know, they told him, all right, you give up that, you'll be accepted. And she got up in that British accent and said, never. She was a preacher, too, you know. I know a woman right now, her and her husband, a group of people go out in the streets preaching. Is that wrong? It's wrong, but the men ain't doing it. I went to a Baptist preacher and said, listen, you know, at this event right here, do you think uh, I should have preached on the streets, but I didn't get your permission. Well, it would have been great that you did it because, you know, they were enjoying their time. <laughs> I had a Southern Baptist preacher say, okay, go ahead. You can sit out in front of the church. In, in in your wheelchair or your scooter, I mean the the, the the walker, and you can hold the sign for Jesus. That Southern Baptist preacher who doesn't believe in any Bible is a lot better than the King James Bible reading preacher. Said, "No, you should not have preached. I'm glad you did it." I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just kicking. And guess what? Guess what? I can kick all I want because I got neuropathy. I can't feel it. I got two cats here. They say, I know I, this morning or yesterday. I, I was like, what's your problem? I looked down. I was, stand, I was standing on the cat. I didn't even feel it. Like, oops, sorry. You know you're not supposed to do that. For my name's sake, Jesus. Did you lose that, that job possession because you're a Christian? Did you lose that, that job promotion because all the entire building, the size of a football field, had the devil's holiday of Halloween, and you dared to put on your desk a sign that your daughter made for you with your, with, with your Bible verse? And they fired me. They told me they were firing me for that, but the legal thing was we, you tell them this. You ever been fired because you got Christian bumper stickers on your car? I was, and possibly my daughter was. Have you gone into work and, and, with a, and your daughter says, hey, that's what I believe. That girl's going to get a reward because in heaven she was persecuted for the name of Jesus. She didn't get yelled at, oh, you got the Red Sox Bumper sticker on your car in Connecticut? Man, we got the Yankees. Still the hell with the Yankees. The hell with the Red Sox. But when you got scripture, Bible, scripture from the King James Bible, and you're in a King James sort of Bible believing church, and you park your car in the handicap spot, and the pastor says, move it. And hey, this is handicap. My wife's got a handicap sticker. My wife's got a handicap. We parked there. If you want the car moved because you got people coming, you, you got friends that are coming to the celebration and all that, you move it yourself. And the guy handed out his hand. And I had to hand the keys, and they moved the car down the road. I ain't kidding you. In the harbor of the Lord in Ormond Beach, Florida. That pastor's not in the ministry no more. He retired. Um, I'm not playing the violin for you. 
the mode, the means of getting a reward of, of forsaking all has to be in the name of Jesus. You, you, you have a JW neighbor in the name of Jesus put a sign at his face in his front door towards his driveway and Thomas said my Lord my God and underneath it right Jesus didn't reveal it every time that man gets in his car he's gonna go, he, he looks over <laughs> if he don't want to look over he accidentally looks over And he hates you, and he, and he throws stuff in your yard and stuff like that, and did it for the name of Jesus. Reward. Pay your neighbor if he's unsaved. Pay your neighbor on the other side. Say, hey, listen, I'll give you 20 bucks a week, a month, whatever you want. You let me put a sign on this side, You're on this fence, facing our neighbor. What are you doing? Not just, I'll give you money if you let me put it. And you put, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And then he put underneath it, there was no rebuke. And that, that Jehovah Witness, man, he, he's going to fly out of his driveway, smack a car because he's not going to look both ways because he's going to see Jesus is God. Your neighbor hates you and throws stuff in your yard and all that, calls the police, blah, blah, blah. Your dog just happened to bark once that night, he calls the cops on you. That's for Jesus' namesake. I've had churches and pastors and Christians. And I stood for the name of Jesus. Shall receive. Now look at this. Everyone. See that everyone? Shall receive a hundredfold. That. Is a sower. That sometimes he received a hundredfold. When you trade your talents in. At the judgment seat of Christ, and there's gold, silver, and precious. That's a hundred. That's more than a hundredfold, friend. I had never seen real gold in my life, friend. I had never seen silver in my life. You say precious stone. I don't know if that's precious stones in the in the jewelry. That could be artificial. They make artificial diamonds today. I always want to get a spaceship myself and fly it over to, I think it's, it's Saturn or Uranus. They have to have a big bucket and come back. They say it rains diamonds. I want them plant it. True. You're going to need more than an uh, umbrella. <clears throat> and shall inherit everlasting life. Now let me ask you something. For the Christian now. Are you saved because you're going to get gold, silver, and precious stone in the name of Jesus? No. That's the ones that are under the law right now. That's the disciples right now. That rich young ruler just walked away from Jesus. And he asked, what must I do to, to get eternal life? Jesus said, you know, sell all your goods, give it to the poor. In the name of Jesus. Now, let's say he went out and sold all his goods for the poor, not for Jesus. Just to be a good little fellow, like, like Jesus said earlier in Matthew. Hey, look at me. I'm giving this. I'm giving a hundred dollars to this guy right here. Look at it. Hey, hey, get the get the cameras. Watch me serve food at the at the soup kitchen for 15 minutes, having you think, you know, by the by the by the media, oh, he's been there all day. <laughs> They had that, that rock guy, whatever it was. I got the rock, Jesus Christ. They, they showed a picture one day. He's at a soup kitchen serving. How long? And did he start serving? I don't know. I have no idea. Did he start serving when the cameras were turned on? <laughs> what happened when the cameras went home? He followed it. You know, look at us do good. Jesus said, you're a hypocrite. What do you do off the cameras? What do you do in private? Have you ever taken money and given it to the pastor or somebody in church to say, listen, I don't want anybody to know this, but give this to the Smith family. Give this to the Harvey family. Give this to this woman. Give it to this man. Give it to this boy. And don't you dare tell them who, do who did it. I've had people do it for me. I've had the church treasurer in one church. 
I think five times to come up to hey, somebody told me to give me this envelope. Don't you dare ask who did it. Because if they wanted to know, they would say it's, you know, who. They're going to get a reward. But the reward has to be in the name of Jesus. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Plainly simple, I'm, I'm going to say what I think is going to happen. The, ver the very last Christian that gets saved is going to be the first one at the judgment seat of Christ. Andrew will be the last one to judge the seat of Christ because he's the first one that came to Jesus. How do you know that? Because he went and got Peter. Andrew will be last. The very last Christian that got saved is going to be first. You know what I think and all thinking? And I'll throw it out there. We've been talking for a long time. I think there's a possibility the last person is going to be Jesus. Oh, brother, you've had every single Christian judged. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. They've all been judged. They've all been rewarded or been no rewards. Okay? you got Christians that are wearing crowns. you got Christians not wearing crowns. you got Christians that are going to have a city in the, in the millennium. There are going to be Christians that don't have a city in the millennium. There are going to be Christians that try to give it all. There are going to be Christians that gave half of it all. There's going to be Christians that are going to give it none of the all. Now, can you imagine Jesus Christ coming to the judgment seat of Christ? Everything he does, when the fire comes, he ain't going to hell. The angels sit there with the broom and the dust pan and maybe say, hey, get ready. <laughs> yeah, right. You think I'm going to have to pick up some dust from him? You really think that? You think Jesus is going to have any wood, hair, stubble? And his judgment will say to all of us that have been judged. That would be quite interesting. And what about that moment we take all our crowns and place it upon him and cast it at him? Oh, you don't get a reward. What are you going to do? You can't sing if you've got no reward. Crown him, crown him, crown him Lord of all. <laughs> You're not going to throw dust at him. That's what Shimei did to David. Dust and rocks. And he ended up dead by Solomon. 